today we finally acknowledge the obvious, that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. This is nothing more or less than a recognition of reality. It is also the right thing to do. This is Steve Leibowitz for Win TV. In the immediate aftermath of U.S. President Donald Trump's speech recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital and announcing his intention to move the embassy, Israel launched a campaign to convince other countries to follow suit. I spoke to Ambassador Alan Baker from the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Baker answered questions about which countries could be next and focused attention on Canada, where he served as Israeli ambassador. Ambassador Baker, Donald Trump has made the move. The United States uh, recognizes Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, and he will be moving the embassy. Do you expect any of the American allies to follow suit and, and, and move here as well? I think once the dust settles uh, and, and the, the, the huge panic that, that the, the French and the British and, and the, the Turks and, and, and the Palestinians themselves and the Jordanians are, are trying to, to uh, st stir up, I think once things settle down, I think uh, it, it will slowly happen. I think other states, uh, I, I understand the, the, the Czechs are, are already thinking of doing, doing it. I, I think the Australians will probably come along. I would hope um, other very friendly states. Like other Canada. very friendly states like Canada. You were ambassador to Canada. Isn't it natural that Canada would become the next country that moves its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? I, I would expect that. I would hope that. And I think it, 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 uh, it, it, it's appropriate for Canada to be number two. But uh, the, the present Canadian uh, uh, government uh, uh, has taken a step back from the, the former uh, supportive government of uh, uh, the previous prime minister. Some point out the fact that the armistice of 1949 left Israel with parts of Jerusalem, and parts of Jerusalem were outside of uh, Israeli control. But the parts that were inside, what would be the possible legal problem internationally, uh, in terms of international law, for, the, for embassies to be located in Jerusalem, in that part of the city that's been part of Israel since its establishment? Absolutely no problem. That's why uh, uh, we're all puzzled why since 1949, and since Israel was accepted as a member of the United Nations, uh, they've never done that. The truth is that some states did establish uh, uh, embassies in, in, in Western Jerusalem. Very few. And, and um, they, they, under pressure, and, and, and for all sorts of reasons, they, they got up and left. But there's absolutely no logical reason why uh, um, embassies haven't been and shouldn't be established in, in Western Jerusalem uh, to know. Would it have been useful if Donald Trump had said we are establishing our embassy in the western side of Jerusalem and we are not making any determination about the future of the city? Look, this is what uh, Putin said in, in uh, April uh, 2017, a few months ago, where he said, look, you know, we recognize Israel's sovereignty in West Jerusalem and we will accept Palestinian sovereignty if and when they, they establish their, their, their state in East Jerusalem. Uh, I think it, it, it's better that, that Trump left it general as, as Jerusalem. But he added the proviso, which, which is, is logical and which is, is, fits in with accepted U.S. policy for, for years and years, that whatever final settlement will be reached with respect to Jerusalem between the Palestinians and the Israelis will be acceptable to uh, the U.S. administration. Ambassador Alan Baker, thanks so much for being with us at World Israel News. You're welcome. Another expert told me about countries in Eastern Europe and Africa that could soon recognize Jerusalem as the Israeli capital. This is Steve Leibowitz for WIN TV.